Our next paper bears the title, Constructive Criticism, the Revival of Beauty in Protestant Church Architecture. Please welcome Yevgeny Allen. A young man was invited to church by a close friend. Reluctant at first, he eventually accepted the invitation because of his friend's persistence. He approached the front of the building and opened the door and was swallowed by a darkened room where only a stage was lit. He scanned the room thinking, why is it so dark? What are these people doing here? Why is there a stage who's performing? He then wondered, is this what a church is supposed to look like? The gentleman had never attended church before, but back in his hometown, he'd always admire one from afar with towering steeples and stained glass. Yet the environment he was currently in did not bring back those childhood feelings of awe and wonder. Instead, he felt like an outcast, pressing against the barren walls as an attempt for comfort. Our ideas of what churches should look and feel like are today formed by the personal opinions of the designer, what they think will interest people and appear more innovative. But what really is the proper church environment? How will the structure of the church contribute to its main goal as a place of worship to glorify God? Places of worship in the Christian tradition began with the Hebrew tabernacle and temple, then later developed into a formalized church space. After the pattern Solomon set building the temple, the people of God continue to incorporate beauty in their worship spaces. We can observe the importance of beauty in the sacred, beginning with the temple, then in Constantine's churches, the Byzantine churches, the medieval cathedrals, then to the masterpieces of the Renaissance era. Cathedrals and monasteries incorporated the concept of sacred beauty in their architecture as a new way to express divine language. Some of these structures still stand to this day, a testimony to the quality of craftsmanship the people placed in building it and to the importance that the people in God, of God, placed on them. Their beauty is also a testament to a way in which their builders sought to please God. God appointed us as creatures made in his image to act as sub-creators so that we may imitate him in making beautiful things. With this in mind, Christians have the role of prioritizing aesthetic beauty in church architecture for the structures serve as houses for the Lord and their sacredness and transcendent aims should be should be reflected in their physical spaces. The Protestant church of today differs little from cultures from which it is drawn in either entertainment preferences, educational practice, or in aesthetic choices, making the structure hard to distinguish from other buildings. Churches should strive for a design that honors the sacred so that God may be recognized and rediscovered through a structure that is distinct and set apart from all other buildings. A beautiful structure is a readily accessible way to worship and exalt him, one grounded in both the tradition and the word of God. Everything about God's creation was beautiful, from the heavens to the seas, to the land, to the Roman creatures, then to his final creation, man. God created this beautiful and diverse world and continues to make beautiful things, so we as his creatures have the opportunity to act as sub-creators, imitating his intentionality. Human beings naturally desire harmony and orderliness, as demonstrated by the temples and churches constructed throughout the ages, every place people have lived. People instinctively sought the perfect worship space for offering sacrifices and worshiping God, so the temple was created. Beauty, though interpreted differently in different cultures, was a key constant. No one ever sought to build a temple of ugliness. Architecture is possibly the most self-conscious of the arts. The builder must always keep appearances in mind, inside and out. Since God is the king of the universe, the creator, the one true authority, he is deserving of honor, adoration, obedience, and respect. 
awe-inspiring church buildings provide spectators with this realization. For example, Roman Catholic cathedrals had a floor plan shaped like a cross. So viewers were reminded of Jesus' sacrifice and God's never-ending, unconditional love for them. Artists such as architects, carpenters, and painters can utilize their gift to benefit the church by upholding the Christian heritage and contributing to the tradition through being good stewards of their gifts. Our buildings demonstrate the values and capacity of our era. Goodness, truth, and beauty point to transcendent ideas beyond the everyday human experience. God is the only perfect form of these things. So we strive to build structures that are honorable for worship of him. For this reason, beauty should be considered a priority in church architecture. But it is evident that beauty is no longer one of the top priorities of the church in America, reflected in the degradation of its architectural structure. The Protestant evangelical church is focusing more on growth or worship as entertainment as defined by our cultural norms. It is common practice to refurbish a movie theater into a church or to meet in a stadium or auditorium. Many churches are indistinguishable from a warehouse rather than the church being adorned with speakers and stage lights. It should be adorned with symbols of church worship. God desires us to use artistic talents to worship him. Symbols of church worship can range from incorporation of light, color, space, and biblically themed art to crosses and images of Jesus throughout the space. This made it clear that the church is a place for worshiping God. Churches that do not emphasize beauty in its structure demonstrate value in other things, some with the mindset that everything on earth is temporary and therefore insignificant to eternity. They emphasize evangelism and the message while disregarding the design of the house in which the Lord dwells. But in general, a place created with utility purposes and an atmosphere and intentionality receives more respect. Beauty elevates and brings dignity to a space. And God values our creative efforts when we use our skills to incorporate beauty in the church. With this in mind, churches can be built to meet the stand standards of aesthetic and utilitarian interests, where form follows function. Churches and cathedrals with tall ceilings use their vertical form to direct viewers' attention upwards, to recognize God's divine presence. Stained glass windows depicting biblical stories allowed illiterate peasants to gain an understanding of the gospel without letters. Recognizable shapes, whether dome, steeples, or cruciform, fulfill the function of distinguishing churches from other buildings. The basic materials of the church itself, while valuable, have their real value in a structure that points to the creator of all things. By witnessing carefully crafted characteristics of intentionally structured churches, viewers are moved to worship God. Some may argue that God is more concerned with the building of relationships of people within the church rather than the building itself, and that money should be spent evangelizing or giving to the poor. It is true that God is concerned with his people first and foremost, but this does not mean he is indifferent to his house. The attention given in scripture to the tabernacle and temple demonstrates that God can be glorified by structures, which can facilitate the forming of relationships between people through the unity of worship. Matthew 26, 6 through 13, tells of a woman who anointed Jesus using very expensive oil. The disciples are shocked when they see this, wondering why the woman would waste her oil on such a thing. Jesus, Jesus responds, saying, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. The woman didn't use ordinary expensive or inexpensive household olive oil to anoint Jesus, but her best resources to demonstrate how much she valued him. 
This translates into how we should build our churches with intention and value, which America most certainly has the resources for, rather than doing the minimum amount of work to construct churches we should strive to use our materials and resources in order to develop a holy worship space. In conclusion, to fulfill our duty as sub-creators, we must imitate the Lord's intentionality in creating the world when building our churches. The church is a holy place, a place set apart from all others, a place made to worship God. So everything in the structure should be praising him. Artistic renewal in our worship space will revitalize congregational faith and worship. Our environments make an impact on how we think and feel. So a structure that is beautiful and filled with the presence of God will serve as a sacred space for praising our creator. Winston Churchill once famously said, we shape our buildings and afterwards our buildings shape us. Disregarding ascetics in the church, will expose contemporary Christian culture to a dangerous process of decay. God painted an incredible masterpiece when creating the world, making beautiful things as means of expressing his image. Christians, I challenge you to reflect how the space you worship in affects your attitude towards God. We must hold fast to the role God has given us, and prioritize beauty in church architecture. Thank you.